This is Japan, and this is one of the few engineering marvels of the country. But there is not just one. There are several airports built on water in Japan, including Tokyo Haneda, Kansai, Kobe Airport, and a few more. A lot of airports in Japan are either 100% on water or a part of them was extended in the water like Tokyo Haneda. However, Japan isn't the only one with airports on water. Hong Kong and Singapore are a few other ones in the region. Hong Kong was completely built on the water while Singapore was extended to water by making a huge island next to the airport. These airports might look really impressive, but most of the times impressive means loads of money. And that is the same here. Airports built on water are significantly more expensive than building an airport on land. This is because of the additional engineering and construction requirements involved in this, including the bridge built to the airport, at least a mountain of soil to build the surface, and several more projects to make this one masterpiece. The cost of building an airport on water can go upward from hundreds of millions to billions of dollars depending on the scope and complexity of the project. But the main question is why? Why Japan is building airports in water even though they cost more than double the amount of money it would cost to build on land? There are a number of reasons for Japan to build airports on water. The most major one is the scarcity of land. Japan is known for its densely populated urban areas and mountainous terrain, which have led to land scarcity issues in the country. 80% of land in Japan is mountainous and the plains between them are close to completely populated with residential and business buildings. The population of Japan is currently around 126 million people, which puts a significant strain on the available land resources. For comparison, land distribution in America per person would be about 30,000 square meters, and in Japan, it will be about 3,100. Taking such large portion of land means giving up their valuable land which could have been used for farming or some other practices. They couldn't give up their land. So, Japan made use of its greatest national resource, the sea that surrounds it on all sides, and simply built the airports on water after building artificial islands for them. It was the perfect solution and allowed them to expand their transportation network without encroaching on valuable land. The same is the reason with other cities with airports on water. Just like Japan, Hong Kong also has a massive population, the land they had left was all mountains and they also had no choice but to build the airport on water. But this doesn't mean it's not value for its money. Airport on water has its own benefits. Building the airports on water helped to mitigate some of the potential environmental and social impacts of the project. By constructing the airport on a man-made island, the project avoided disrupting local ecosystems and communities. This prevented potential protests from local people which happened at the time of building Narita Airport, which was built on agricultural land. But that's not it. The benefits of building an airport on water go way past than just the social and environmental impacts. Able to extend the airport is a major one. It allows for more runways and terminal buildings to be constructed as there are no physical limitations to building on water. This could increase the airport's capacity to handle more flights and passengers. Hong Kong did the same thing, they had two runways which they now extended to three by just making another island right next to the old one. The initial reason to build the airports on water was land scarcity, but the benefits were compelling as well. The noise of jet engines was a major problem for people living next to airports, but by building runways on water, planes can take off and land over the ocean, reducing noise levels for nearby communities. This way, they don't have to put nighttime restrictions on planes which many other airports like Heathrow and Munich have to apply. In addition, building airports on water can provide additional safety benefits. In the event of an emergency landing, a water landing can be less hazardous than landing on land. Furthermore, airports built on water can be designed to withstand natural disasters, such as earthquakes and tsunamis, more effectively than traditional land-based airports. A major test of this came with the Kobe earthquake in January 1995, this was Japan's worst earthquake since 1923 and left more than 6,000 people dead. The epicenter was about 20 kilometers away from the airport. Despite extensive damage to buildings at a similar distance, the airport was almost undamaged. This success is attributed to the use of sliding joints in all airport building construction. This proves that Japan's decision to build airports on water turned out great, except for the flooding of Kansai Airport in 2018 which was due to lowering surface levels. However, except that, 
there have been no major problems from other airports. These airports reflect Japan's innovative approach to problem-solving and commitment to sustainable infrastructure development.